Here we're going to talk about implementing printing on a local PC workstation. The first thing we need to do is talk about the different types of interfaces that can be used to connect our printer to our workstation. Over the years, a variety of different types of interfaces have been implemented that allow us to connect our PC system here to a printer. Some are older, some are no longer really used, some are still used very widely, as well as some newer interfaces that are really starting to catch on. Let's take a look at the oldest one. In the early days of printing, we sent documents to the printers using a serial connection. Now, this worked, but serial connections had a couple of disadvantages. Number one, they were kind of hard to configure. They weren't impossible, but you had to know your stuff. You couldn't just take your serial printer, plug it into a serial port on your PC, and have it work. You had to configure the start bits, the stop bits, the flow control, all those things that are required to set up a serial connection. In addition, because the serial printer sent the document to the printer one bit at a time, a large document could take a very long time to get from the workstation down here to the printer. Now, at the same time, serial printers had a number of advantages. One of the great advantages was the fact that the printer cable itself could be really long. The very first computer lab that I managed as a career used several different serial printers, and it was great because we could put a printer on one side of the room and then 20 feet away have the workstation that printed to it because it was a serial printer and we could use a very long cable. In addition, for a time, there were a variety of different SCSI interfaces used to connect workstations to printers. SCSI stands for Small Computer System Interface. Now, these were used mostly in professional organizations. You really didn't see them on home computers, and they weren't used that often because just like with serial printing, you kind of had to know what you were doing with SCSI in order to get your system to print to the printer. You had to understand the concept of termination. You had to understand the concept of ID. If you didn't know about these things, you had a lot of problems. The interface that's probably used most often for home users, it's been around for a long time and is still used to an extent, is Parallel. Parallel was a lot easier to implement than Serial or SCSI. Instead of having to configure something, basically with a parallel printer, you plugged one end into your workstation, the other end into the parallel port on your printer, you turned everything on, and it worked. You didn't have to configure start bits or stop bits. You didn't have to worry about termination or unit IDs or anything like that. Parallel's been around for a while. It's still with us. However, it's starting to face a little bit of pressure, not even a little bit, probably a lot of pressure, from USB, Universal Serial Bus. Universal Serial Bus works great for printers. The one advantage USB has over an interface such as Parallel is the fact that, like Parallel, it, it's easy to configure. You just plug everything in and it works. But it also can support multiple printers. When we're dealing with Parallel, unless you have multiple Parallel ports installed in your system, and most folks didn't have that. You, most systems came with one. You could maybe purchase one extra interface card that had a Parallel port on it. You really can only hook up one printer to a system. With USB, you can hook up lots and lots and lots of different printers all running off the same system. That's very useful if you have a situation where you maybe need a laser printer that's just black and white to print regular documents, but you also need, say, a color laser printer to print out high-quality color prints. Maybe you have a photo printer that you need to use to print out photos. Maybe you even have a solid ink printer that you use to print out brochures or flyers or something like that. You can hook them all up with USB. With Parallel, that really wasn't an option. In addition to USB, another newer standard that's used to connect printers is FireWire. Now, FireWire has not caught on as strongly for printing as USB. There are a few FireWire printers around and they have a lot of the same advantages as USB. They're really fast. You can send a print job to a USB or FireWire printer very quickly. Not like serial when we're dealing with one bit at a time. We're transferring data here. If you're using the latest USB standard, you're looking at 480 megabits per second. FireWire can be 400 or 800 megabits per second. And like USB, FireWire can also have multiple printers all attached to the same stations. You can print to lots of different printers without having to do anything special. 
For whatever reason, though, FireWire just hasn't caught on as strongly as USB has. You can also use an infrared interface to connect your workstation to your printer. This works really nice if your office is cluttered with cables and you want to get rid of some. Instead of using a wire, we use an infrared light signal to send information from our workstation over here to our printer. Infrared works really good. However, it's got a lot of limitations. For instance, line of sight. If I were to set a stack of books right next to my workstation here or next to my printer where the infrared port is, we can't print anymore. And that happens all the time. In addition, if the printer is too far away, more than about a meter away, then things start to get flaky. And there's also security issues. Maybe you're printing stuff that maybe you don't want other people seeing. If that's the case, then infrared you know, it's got some concerns because this infrared signal can be picked up by anybody else who happens to be nearby with an IR port. In addition to IR, we can also use a wireless connection to send print jobs from a workstation to our printer. It works on a lot of the same principles as infrared. Well, infrared uses infrared light to transfer the print job. A wireless uses a radio signal to send the print job up here to the printer. Now, at first glance, you might be thinking, well, it looks like it has a lot of the same limitations as IR. And actually, it doesn't. For one thing, we're not concerned with obstacles. The radio waves can go through things. If you were to put a book right next to your radio antenna, as long as the wireless printer was relatively close, it'd probably still make it. In addition, you could also move the printer into a different room. You can still send the print job because the radio waves will go through walls. So we're not quite as limited as we are with IR. In addition, with radio signals, we can configure encryption so that we don't have to worry about somebody intercepting this signal. With radio, this is really an issue because this radio wave can go through walls. So you might be printing in your office building and having your radio waves go through to a neighboring office building or even down the street a ways. You don't want folks picking up that stray signal. So with wireless, we can also use a form of encryption to make sure that if someone does pick up that stray signal, they can't read it because the data has been scrambled. In addition, you can also print documents over a network to a networked printer. Now we're not going to go into great detail here on networked printing. That will be covered separately. But in general, what we do is we connect our printer to a network interface and connect to the network medium. And we also connect our workstation to the same network medium. And then we can send our print job instead of sending it to a local port, such as a parallel or USB or over an IR or wireless connection, we actually send it to the network card in our workstation and the signal travels through the network medium to the printer. So the first step in implementing a printer with a workstation is deciding which type of interface you're going to be using. More than likely today you're going to be using either a parallel or a USB connection, possibly a wireless or a network connection as well. Physically connect the printer to the 